I, I, look, man, I mean, did they think that one Puerto Rican's vote was going to be flipped because of a joke that Tony made? By the way, Puerto Ricans are known for being great insult comics. Yeah. Like Luis Gomez, mm -hmm. great insult comic. Yep. Joe Rogan and Dave Smith had an absolutely hilarious and thought-provoking discussion on the Joe Rogan experience, diving into how the Puerto Rican vote may have been influenced by Tony Hinchcliffe's joke. Joe Rogan and Dave Smith didn't hold back, making this one of the most entertaining and insightful conversations you'll watch. Let's check it out together, and I'll share my thoughts along the way. Freddie Prince Jr. was a great comic. Pu Puerto Rico has a history of great comedy. They can talk some yeah. shit. Puerto, if you grew up in New York at all, you know, Puerto Ricans can 100%. talk a lot of shit. Lewis is one of the best shit talkers I've ever met. Also, garbage. But it's so also, Tony it's had a point. Like Italians. Italian, yeah. And I'm Italian. Italians and Puerto Ricans have a lot in common that we talk a lot of shit to each other. So we don't get insulted that much by jokes. It's not the same thing. Right. Like, it's very hard to insult an Italian and have it stick. Yeah. It doesn't work. You yeah. can call him a Guido. Like, yeah, I'm a Guido. You can call him a greaseball. No one cares. You, you, no one, go back to your country. I don't, no one, generations. It's also, my, my wife is Italian and her, her, my, all my in-laws, her whole family is Italian. And it is like, when you have a dinner, it's just everyone yells. They're animals. Like, everything's a yell. They're the Romans. Like, I'll, I'll literally, her, her my brother-in-law, who I love, is a great guy, super smart, but he will, if he's agreeing with you in a conversation yeah. and you were like in the next room, you would be like, is there about to fight with brother-in-law? Like, what's going on in there? No, he's just agreeing with what I'm saying, but he's screaming it at me, you know? But that, it, but it is a thing where it's very, they're very thick-skinned. They're very. not, they're not like fragile people. It's one exactly. of my favorite things Puerto about Ricans, them. Puerto Ricans are, are some of the, the same best. way. Also, look at Puerto Rico. Some of the best boxers of all time mm -hmm. came out of Puerto Rico. It's one, Felix Trinidad, yep. you got Gomez, Wilfredo Gomez, you got incredible fighters came out of this one place. It's not the t I mean, I'm sure there was a few people that were pissed off at that joke, but the reality is, is one of the things that helped Tony is that joke was based about Tony's concern for the environment. Tony yeah. is obsessed with recycling. He's like, you know, recycling's bullshit. You know, it all goes in a <laughs> landfill. It, you told you put I'm going to put it in the blue bin. It all goes in the landfill. So Tony was obsessed with the Pacific garbage patch. And then he got obsessed with Puerto Rico because they don't have any room. So their landfills are just overflowing right. with garbage. They literally have a giant garbage problem. So he came up with a joke based around that. I think it's called Puerto Rico. I, I, I was texting with him. Um, after it, and I, I thought it was so great. I mean, I thought even the uh, his the bit that he did on Israel Palestine was so funny. If you enjoy this type of content, please like and subscribe. It really helps me a lot. Let's get back to the video. He he uh, ripped both sides, yeah. and then he did. By the way, same with the Puerto Rico thing. There was an underlying really good point to it, which is always like the best comedy when you're just being funny, but at the same time you're like, ah. Oh, and he did kind of nail that too, where he was just like, why are we funding wars that have been going on forever? Like, right. figure it out, guys. Yeah. And then he just got a great rip on Muslims, a great rip on Jews, and it's so just, the way they also, picked out Puerto Ricans. He's going too. on in the morning. There's no opening act. No one knows there's going to be comedy. Yeah, the most difficult setup. And there's no one on before him other than a prayer. They do a prayer. <laughs> they, were sing, they were singing prayers and songs. And then the music stops, and Tony goes on flat to a bunch of people in the middle of the day. Well, yeah, the dude. lights are on bright. It makes no sense. It's the ter worst setup of all time for comedy. I, re I remember in real time when I was watching it. Like being like, a, I was like, well, I mean, Tony's not going to be able to do Tony in this setup. So like, I wonder what he's going to do. And then like, as it starts, you're like, oh, he's just going to do Tony. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Dude. It's crazy. For him. It's the that's nuttiest ballsy. thing. Should have never done it. But the fact that he did it, whatever. It's like, listen, man, there's going to be some people that tried to capitalize on that. And that was a big thing. Like AOC really mobilized, which is funny because I'm almost certain that AOC has been to see Kill Tony. Really? Yes. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, almost certain. Almost certain. Wait, here at the mothership? The, I don't think so here. But somewhere saw Kill Tony. Eh, she probably loves it. They're all so funny. I wonder who. Let's call him up. All right. Let's get to the bottom of it. Wait, we have access. Call Tony Hinchcliffe. Before we dive into this call, I'd really love to hear your thoughts on it. Let me know what you think. <laughs> yeah. Hey, dude, you're live. you're live on the air right now with Dave Smith. I need to answer a question. I need a question answered. Did AOC yeah. ever come to see Kill Tony? She says that she did, but we're almost positive that she didn't. I never met her in the, any of the shows in L.A. I mean, she could have conceivably have bought a ticket to Madison Square Garden, but she never posted about it. Well, she probably wouldn't post about it. It's, it's too sketchy. Your, your show's sketchy. Yeah. But so how do you know that she <laughs> says that she was there? She 
tweeted that she's been to a taping. When all that stuff went down, she said that she's disappointed in me and she's been to a taping. I can't remember the exact tweet right now, but it was the day of the, the day of the Madison Square Garden Trump thing. She posted, I'm really disappointed in Tony Hinchcliffe. I'm a fan of Kel Tony and I've been to a taping, something like that. I don't want to misquote her like she would certainly do to me. <laughs> but she's been there and she was surprised? That makes no sense. She, yeah. No, nothing makes sense. They're out of their goddamn minds. And now their voices are quieted, thank God. Tony, America's back, baby. Here's the thing. This whole conversation really shows show close Humdi and politics are connected these days, especially when a joke turns into a full-on public debate. Joe Rogan and Dave Smith are pointing out that the best comedy of Tums from real issues. Tony's joke about Puerto Rico wasn't just a random digit, was tied to actual problems like their overflowing landfills and recycling challenges. It's that mix of humor and real-life issues that makes people laugh while also giving them something to think about. What's interesting is how they highlight that certain communities like Puerto Ricans and Italians seem to handle jokes better. They don't take things too seriously and are tough enough to embrace the humor. Joe and Dave are saying these groups are hard to fend, but when someone like AOC steps in and makes a joke political, it shifts the vibe completely. Instead of just enjoying the humor, it becomes a big debate where everyone feels the need to pick a side. Joe bringing up AOC's involvement adds an extra layer of complexity. Is she genuinely upset about the joke? Or is this a strategic move to energize her sup? Orders? Joe even questions if she's actually seen Tony's show, or if it's just another way to score political points. At the end of the day, this is a perfect example of how Cumdi can spark meaningful conversations, but it can also get messy when politics enters the mix. It's a delicate balance between using humor to talk about tough topics and having it turned into a tool for political arguments. This whole conversation really makes you think about where that balance should be.